In this video, we're going to release a mast from rest, let it fall vertically down and hit a massless spring, and do calculations regarding speed and amount of compression of the spring uh, and so forth. The spring has a fourth force constant of 180 newtons per meter. The mass is 0.35 meters above the top of the string. The first calculation, what's the speed of the object as it hits the top of the spring? I would suggest you make a little sketch of what's uh, happening here. Just a crude sketch over on the, the left side as you can see. And label in that sketch, that'll help you not make an error in calculations. The way I'm going to determine the speed of the object is to use the change in the potential energy. The object's going to lose MGH of potential energy, mass, acceleration due to gravity, height above the top of the string, spring and I'm going to have h equals zero at the top of the spring for this first calculation. At the top of the spring, then there'll be no potential energy, gravitational potential energy for the object, and it'll have kinetic energy. This is the instant it hits the spring before the spring affects the speed of the object, and that'll be future calculation. So the mass cancels on both sides, and we have 9.8 times the 0.35 meters of height equals one half v squared. You should pause the uh, video and check this on your calculator. I came up with 2.62 meters per second then for the speed of the object. Uh, let's go a little further. Next question would be, suppose that we just gently uh, put the mass, this 0.25 kilograms, put that mass on the spring and kind of keep the system uh, not moving much, but to let it move to the equilibrium position. The equilibrium position, the place where the upward force of the spring on the object is equal to the weight of the object. Just curious what that uh, what that position might be. So we're no longer, this is a separate problem from the dropping. Uh, in this calculation, we bring the mass to the spring and just help it uh, compress to the place where there's a balance. So what we want, again, showing the sketch here, we have uh, upward force of the spring on the object, downward force of the uh, weight of the object. And again, I'm assuming an ideal spring that has no mass. I'm not including the mass of the spring in any of the calculations before or after this uh, Part B. So we have the upward force of the spring, I'm taking upward to be positive, and the downward force, the weight of the object, comes in as a negative term, uh, equals zero. We're balancing the two. We want the place where those forces have the same size. I'm going to move mg to the right side. The force constant is 180 newtons per meter. The way we calculate the spring force is minus kx. In this situation, x is downward. We're compressing the spring. The minus sign tells us to reverse that direction. The force of the spring is upward. <coughs> so I hope you don't get uh, bogged down that there's a minus sign in this spring force equation. This minus sign just tells you the force direction, uh, the spring force direction. On the right side, mass is mg. So multiply, divide by 180, and I came up with 0.0136 meters, 1.36 centimeters. Again, you should uh, check my work. <coughs> Concept question here. Uh, when the object is dropped, will it stop at this position we calculated in part B? Uh, will it uh, indeed stop when the spring force matches the, the weight? <coughs> what do you think? Object is coming down, hitting the spring. There is a place where the force upward of the spring equals the weight of the spring, weight of the mass falling. Does the motion suddenly stop at that position? And the answer, of course, is no. You think about the uh, what's happening here. As the object hits the spring, at first, x is very small. The mass has not compressed the spring very much, and the spring force is small. The weight of the uh, object is larger than the upward force of the spring. So on the way further down, um, down to this point where the uh, uh, forces do match, 
the force of the spring is less than mg, and the object's accelerating all the way down to this point, and it has momentum, it's going to keep on moving through this place where the spring force equals mg. As we go further down, below this equilibrium position we calculated in part b, then the spring force is going to exceed mg, and the mass is going to decelerate, will slow down. Um, so, just to clear up that concept, the mass does not suddenly stop where these forces balance. The object has momentum, it's going down. So how are we going to calculate that, uh, that position? Well, that's our next task. We want to calculate the, uh, uh, how far down it goes. Before we, actually it's not our next task. Before we calculate that, I want to calculate what's the speed of the object when the spring is compressed 1.36 centimeters, that equilibrium position. What is the speed when we get down to the place where the force of the spring equals the weight of the object? So, I'll draw a couple pictures here. We have uh, have this object falling down to hit here, and then we compress um, the 1.36 centimeters. Can I use v squared equals v naught squared plus 2ax? We're trying to calculate a speed. The problem is the acceleration is not constant when we're in contact with the spring. While the object is dropping here, you could use v squared equals v naught squared plus 2ax to find the speed at the top. But when we're in contact with the spring, the force of the spring is variable. So the acceleration of the object is variable, and this equation is illegal. The acceleration is variable. Instead, we're going to use energy method use an energy method. This object is going to give up a potential energy down to this point, down to this place where the force of the spring matches the weight. So I'm going to have you know, h equals zero uh, down at this position. That potential energy given up by the object <clears throat> goes to two forms. There's kinetic energy as the object is still moving down. There's going to be further compression in the next uh, section we'll calculate. Uh, the object is still moving down, and we have potential energy in the spring. So let's go ahead and set this up. MGH, 0.25 kilograms, 9.8. The mass has fallen 0.35 meters above the contact with the spring, and then we've compressed the spring 0 0.0136 meters. So that's our total distance traveled in here. That's our H. Then we have 1 half m v squared, trying to find v. And we have potential energy calculation, one half spring force constant, and how much the spring is compressed. The spring is uncompressed, x is equal to zero um, on this picture on the left before the mass hits, and now we're compressing uh, 1.36 centimeters. So pause and uh, see if your calculation matches my calculation. Here's the potential energy released. 0.125 for the coefficient of v squared. Here's the potential energy in the spring. So we're going to subtract this number from both sides. Then we divide through by 0.125 to get the number for v squared. Don't forget, now you have to take a square root of both sides. The kinetic energy as v squared, we want v. So we're taking square root. I come up with 2.64 meters per second. I was a little surprised. and. Some of you can maybe see if I've made an error someplace, but 2.62 meters per second when we hit the top of the spring. We're only now, we're traveling a little bit faster, so that's good. It needs to be faster, but 2.64 meters per second, that's not a lot faster, but we haven't dropped much further down, 0 0.0136 meters, so could be okay. Um, if it's not okay, write a comment to the video. What is the maximum compression of the spring? So. And what's the speed of the object when the spring is fully compressed? When it's not compressed anymore, it's not moving. The speed of the object is the same as the speed of the top of the spring. That's zero. So our final velocity is zero. There'll be no kinetic energy here. And what I'm going to do again is an energy method. The mass gives up potential energy, mgh. This can be a different h than the previous calculation. This will be to the fully compressed position. And we have potential energy in the spring, but no kinetic energy. So we're dropping down now, and uh, 
Here's our, our drawing for what's happening. This is before the object hits. Drops down 0.35 meters. And now we're compressing, compressing a distance x. This is greater than the 1.36 centimeters we calculated previously. So MGH, <clears throat> the H now, <clears throat> excuse me, at 0.35 meters traveled above the spring. And then this x for the distance, we compress the spring. That's the total vertical distance that the object has moved. And the potential energy of the spring, again, x equals 0 at the uh, first drawing here before the spring is compressed. So x is 0, x is measured downward. And 1 half 180 times x squared, so it doesn't matter if x is a positive or negative number on this potential energy calculation. Um, it does make a difference in here, and that will we'll use that fact. Uh, should x be a positive or a negative number? Should be positive, because our total distance traveled is greater than 0.35 meters. So whatever number I come up for x, it needs to be a positive to make this h bigger than 0.35 meters. We do some multiplications and distributing through here, through the parentheses. Again, you should pause and check uh, my numbers with your calculator. 180 divided by 2 is 90. And now I'm going to move all the terms to the right side to create a quadratic equation. I kind of prefer the coefficient of the squared uh, term to be positive. So 90x squared. 0 on the left. I've subtracted 2.45x from both sides. I've subtracted 0.8575 from both sides. So quadratic equation, I'm going to use quadratic formula, not just use a key on my calculator to solve a quadratic equation. So the a, the b is minus 2.45. The a value is 90. Um, and then the c value is negative 0.8575. And it is important that for both the b and the a, you keep the minus sign that's entered here when you substitute into the um, equation. b is minus 2.45. c is minus 0.8575. So now time to put in those numbers. And 2.45, this is a positive number now because the formula has a minus sign in front of the b quantity. So minus a minus 2.45, we get positive. Then the 2.45 squared, doesn't matter if you put minus or plus in here because we're going to square that one. Then minus is in part of the formula. 4 times a, again, I've put in the minus sign for the c. The c is a negative number. And again, you should pause and do some of your own uh, calculations here. When I did the uh, uh, calculation in here and took a square root, I got 17.74. Why am I saying I'm only going to use the plus sign? There are two signs here. The quadratic equation has two mathematical solutions. Why is the plus sign the correct physical solution? Well, we need x to be a positive. To make the h bigger than 0.35, this x number has to be positive. If I would use minus 17.74, that would dominate over the positive 2.45 and make a negative result. So you need to use the positive. And in doing that, I came up then with 0.112 meters, um, or 11.2 centimeters. So the spring goes down quite a bit further than where the force of the spring matches the weight of the object. We're going down uh, a total distance of 11.2 meters. That's about 10 more centimeters than uh, where the forces match. How could I check my work? Well, I could check the potential energy, how much gravitational potential energy was given up by the object. So we come back to our um, calculation here, the MGH. So I'm using the x value of 0.112 meters. And I found a potential energy given up um, as the mass falls. That um, is 1.13 joules. How, what is the potential energy of the spring? That's 1 half kx squared. So 1 half times the 180 times 0.112 squared. And that's 1.13 joules. And those match There's with this level of rounding. Of course, as you look on your calculator, if you go out more digits, they won't match exactly. But I've rounded off some of these uh, calculations and we're uh, close enough. It does check out.
So I hope you enjoyed that, learning about uh, how springs can be compressed by a falling mass. If you'd like to see other videos in physics or astronomy content for uh, introductory courses, physics and astronomy, the videos are listed, annotated, uh, find out how long the video is, what the topic is at these websites, totally free, no registration. The astronomy site also has a list of uh, events for the year on a Word document that you can freely print out. Um, if you enjoy these YouTube videos, please subscribe to my channel and keep asking your instructor questions.